I'm Bob Brecka. I'm in the physics department at the University of Dayton, and I am also a professor in the Renewable and Clean Energy graduate program and coordinate the Sustainability Energy and the Environment Initiative. But aside from those uh, occupations, I also have an interest, I've had a long interest in astronomy and the history of astronomy and partly in how some astronomical thinking has provided examples for the scientific method, how we even think about science and how science develops over time. The importance of Copernicus was the, was the combination, again, of, of, of taking observations and trying to come up with the best explanation. And there, in this case, the, he was working against the, the idea of a, of a geocentric universe with the Earth at the center of the solar system, and he thought that, for various reasons, the heliocentric universe would work best. And I, one of the, there, there may be two different things I, I like to take away, or have students take away from a conversation or a thinking about Copernicus versus Ptolemy, for example, geocentric versus heliocentric. One of them is to at least try to keep the context in, in mind because it's not even clear, in fact, it's probably, it is clear that Copernicus's theory with the sun at the center of the solar system versus Ptolemy's geocentric solar system didn't help explain the observations really any better. Copernicus still needed the epicycles. He didn't solve that problem. There were a couple things that you could say were, were explained a little bit better by Copernicus or maybe a little bit more easily by Copernicus, but if it can, comes down to the instrumentalization, that is, why do we want to know this? We want to know it to calculate church holidays. That, that was still a big driving factor. Copernicus's theory didn't do any better than Ptolemy's. It was not more accurate. And so in that sense, it's, it's, we, have, we like to go back and tend to go back and say, ah, it's clear Copernicus was right because the sun was at the center of the universe, not the earth. So he was right and the other one was wrong. But in, but in the sense of which one explained observations better, it was probably a toss-up. So... We have to keep the context and the historical time in mind as well. We have to keep in mind that, you know, was Copernicus right or was was Ptolemy right? Well, we would say Copernicus was right. Well, no, he wasn't because he still said circular orbits and Kepler said, no, it's ellipses. Was Kepler right or was Copernicus right? Well, no, because Kepler didn't really know why this happened. And if we look more carefully, then we go to Einstein and that's our best observation, our best explanation at this point. So who's right or wrong is not the right question. How, is it, how has the science progressed using the best tools of the time to explain the best observations as simply as possible, I would say.